up guys okay sorry for the delay to do part two of can you practice push hands solo and we left off with the ring okay so obviously you have to have all the principles and basics down and all that yada yada and you have to have actual memory of training with people you shouldn't be doing extra stuff if you haven't even met the people in real life to do some kind of training all right this, this is for semi-advanced individuals okay so intermediate to advanced so we went through uh, using the ring just to get your basic uh, frame, right? So if you remember the three pillar thing, you know, the wrist, uh, ankle, elbow, knee, shoulder, hip, right? Uh, center pillar on the other side. So when you're moving, you want to figure out how can I reach without breaking these structures. If I go too far, I might feel my shoulder gets too tense. If I go outside, this one goes out, see? So there's interconnection, right? And you start to feel, okay, well, you know, oh, this is okay, I can get away with this. And you start to feel, and get used to being in position, right? And where you feel, okay, well here I would obviously be throwing off, feel things are tightening up, being locked up. That's what kind of helps you tell you where the range of the hands and how they operate to the body is. The next thing was to use it to check your timing on rotation. Again, keeping that same unison hands to feet method, right? I just work on my rotation. This is very basic silk reeling, okay? Which should be done in every part of the form. But the idea is that I want to make sure that I'm not lagging. Okay, the idea is that I have that connection to move my body in one unit. Then you can use it to practice Pung. So on a very low level, Pung is a mixture of the very beginning of the muscle, in a very, the muscle starting to extend, right? So when the nerves innervate, that very first pulse where the muscles are preparing to go into extension is a stretch reflex. When you couple that with the reaching stretch, which opens up everything else, and you mix that together, you get that feeling of what the arm is doing in pump, right? It's more complicated than that, but we're just gonna isolate what the tendons in the arm is doing. You put your hands in the ring, and you just wanna do that little stretch, okay? Stretch, 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 fine. Now when you get that feeling done, take one side and you're gonna pull and it gives you that same resistance, but you're gonna stretch. And then over time you can test by letting go of the ring, okay? If you let go of the ring and your arm follows the ring, obviously you're, you're in extension, you're not reaching, right? You're not in the stretch reflex, okay? So just trying to find the stretch reflex and the bone structure. Because again, obviously you have to have all the basics to stack this upon. Right, you have to have your closed kinetic chain and obviously feel that ground pad. You shouldn't be feeling this. You should be feeling this in your abs, if anything. Okay? So that's a good way to practice the tendon concept okay? from a mechanical perspective. So I'm going to gently and then stretch and reach. So it's a combination of the beginning of extension with a reach. Okay? That's like. Physiologically, that's what's happening to your body when you're doing pong. I don't care what anybody says, you're a bone puppet, okay? Unless you don't use any muscle, it's, it's, you're, you're insane. You can't stand up without using muscle, all right? And something that people understand about being soft, the best exercise, calisthenic-wise, to, to add to your push hand is just a simple plank. Just a straight plank, and plank in different positions, okay? It's just, just that. And you can say, oh, that's... A, all standing tree poses, all these standing poses, all that all they are are planks. They're just planks vertical rather than planks horizontal. It's actually a regression of a plank. Okay? That's literally what it is. Okay? So it's hard for me because there's a lot of stuff that or even in the, in the popular family systems, I think that they, they went off the reservation when you go and you find the original systems going all the way back to down in Shaolin stuff. How they move is completely different. So there is, at this point in the game, I don't think there's a, a real consensus of what is true. There's practices and lineages, but none of them none of them can be authentic or real or the ultimate anything, you know? So take this with a grain of salt. Okay, so you got that, you got that, fine. So you have the rotations, so now we go back to rotations I'm going to add that feeling of pung and practice the carry around without losing my position. See? It's a lag, right? I want everything to move in 
one unit. Okay? You can also practice your forms. And obviously you're not going to be able to do the form exactly in the frame. But what this will be able to do is just to see as a, as a timing uh, measurement to play with the form doing carrying the cheat ball, doing ward off and seeing if you can get your center to match the ball that you're carrying. Right, now obviously you're going to have to modify the form a little bit, but the whole point of this is not to do the form correctly, it's just to, it's a, a synchronization exercise with the toy. It's a game, okay? It's not supposed to match your form. You, know, you have a concept that's similar to your form, all right? If you're doing Chen style, you have like that going up to monk, those this cope, whatever the fuck it is. You, know, you have all these moves, you have this rotation, you see there's a lot of these rotations. Some of them are, op are opposite, right? And you can use this as a tool to measure the rotations. So obviously going back to push hands, <laughs> the more synchronized you are dealing with incoming forces and the, more, the better your structures, like we said in the last video, you can't train, what you're missing from the training in push hands with a human is the, the natural load of weight, the mass, and also the intent of the person, okay? So the way a human's body's weight is loaded and the interaction electrically, when you touch someone, the sensitivity, and it, it sounds like a weird thing, people don't really understand this, but when it, you, you can actually read the vibration of the person, so you, you know, subconsciously, it's not something you can think of consciously, you feel what they're gonna do. It's like, it's like their body talks and you're listening to them. It's a listening skill, changing is literally, you're listening with your hands. <coughs> it's very similar to reading Braille, right? And anybody who fights, even like, like stand-up, you get a, a feeling just from the shifting of their weight, you kind of know what's going to happen and you're already, put, you have like, it's like Robocop or some shit. And you just sense like the path of the kick coming. You just know, you feel it. You know, you, so it's it's something on a subconscious level that you get. Anyway, so we did uh, those two things, the puddle, which I thought was actually the fourth thing. Right. Um, cool. Now, with the medicine ball, this is a 10 pound medicine ball. Um, the only thing I'm gonna say before you, you can try to do anything, you never wanna try to weight load anything with your thumb down, so the internal rotation elevation is the depth of your shoulder. So bringing your ear up to your shoulder like this and doing anything, or having your thumb down and trying to lift above your shoulder will wreck your shoulder. It's the bicep tendon and the back shoulder up. So you can pretty much do any move except that. Okay? Now this will be pretty heavy for most people, so I would suggest just pin to the wall and slowly pull it. If you didn't know, you still want to move. So your first goal is to try to figure out how much energy you need just to hold it in position. Okay? And it's gonna wanna move. It's a round object in a flat surface. Okay? And then once you find that, just chill for a bit. Don't push into it, don't let go. If you notice you take too much away, it starts to do that. If you push too much in, you're gonna burn out. So you just gotta relax and figure out how to get your shape to hold. Fine. Once you get that, fine. Okay? It's kind of a little isometric. Once you get that, you start to roll the ball in circles, small circles in front, okay? Why don't you get that? You're gonna start to roll yourself around the ball. Okay? You can roll yourself around the ball. So it gets a little tricky. So this is really good for tendon strength and for some kind of sensitivity because you're all following an external object. But nothing replaces a human. You know, it's the same thing uh, training with metal. Okay, when I used to do a knife in the 90s, my teacher was still training people like, you know, we used a little real knife. And when I did demos with my teacher, my first karate school, I, I started when I was 16, he did a demo and put a seven inch kitchen knife and he put a piece of wood in the floor and he was showing, you know, the audience it's a real knife. So he takes the knife to throw it into the board and it sticks into the floor. So, but the reason is because metal, that you, you feel 
metal differently, and our bodies have a natural, um, like a genetic memory to warfare with metal or something. Something fucking weird. But you, you feel different with a piece of metal near you. And just something changes in your body. Like, you know, nothing good's happening. Uh, so I digress. We'll make sure I, I got through everything because I was trying to, that, the form thing, right? Uh, I should write this stuff down and make this video serious. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but uh, I digress. Uh, if you're going to do the ball, I would suggest that you do it with a light ball, um, a physio ball, uh, a tennis ball. Doing it with 10 pounds, um, it's going to really burn you out if you're not used to doing any of that stuff. Um, another thing you can do, again, is the same idea with the ball is to try to do moves of your form with the medicine ball. And it's more so, not so much to make the form perfect, but just to get used to doing isometric contractions and feel the coordination between your body and dealing with an external force. Because even, even though this is like not the best um, alignment or whatever, trying to figure out the amount of technical bullshit to normal humans. <laughs> um, hyper innovation, like, you know, you basically, you're, you geek out the body by giving it an overstimulus, okay? So why I always say, in the beginning, I want somebody who's at your size or heavier than you to train with. When you're holding yourself up on one leg, your body has a certain amount of weight distribution it's dealing with, right? If I put an object on one side, all of a sudden, all extra muscles have to activate to deal with that object, right? So, when I take the weight off, it's gonna feel lighter on one side, if that makes sense. You can use this principle to your advantage using you know, weights and calisthenics and little exercises like this, is by you know, adding stimulus, overstimulating, you'll get a hypercompensation. That's basically the idea, all right? But that can work against you if you're not careful, which is why you know the tools that you should you should use should be very specific and, and symmetrical. If that makes sense. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Is there anything else that's good? Um, you could also just use the wall and press pump. Now, I've seen so many different explanations of how you should practice, okay, and what pump is and how it should be done. I'm going to go with the premise that, you know, prong, when you're thinking of, because I'm going to look at the striking, grappling, and, you know, uh, dislocating and breaking shit. So, the first premise would be long fist type of strike, right? So you'd have to have either the back of the wrist, or the back of the forearm, or the back of the hand, okay? So we're going to go with the back of the wrist, and go with this interpretation, okay? So, generally when I work, I'm looking for that point anyway, I'm looking for the hinges. So I get that wrist joint on fine. Now I'm just gonna practice the extension reflex. I'm I'm not gonna push to open my arm, but I'm gonna think I'm just gonna start to do that. And once I start doing that, I'm gonna open my joints. So it's the beginning of a stretch uh, extension reflex. You need extension, this is flexion, okay? Opening or closing. So it's the beginning of opening my joint, right? But as soon as I start to open it, I stop at opening and change the direction and go out and then I hold that isolated, okay? Mu neuromuscularly, that's the foundation of, of pump. Now the relation, from the hand anyway, the relation of how that works to the rest of the system is where it gets complex, okay? And this is where you have to you deal with all this rebounding and all this other stuff. But just dealing with the structural components of the arm to create pungin, this is basically what it is, okay? As I'm about to open my arm, but as I start that contraction, I turn it off. I, it's like I don't even turn it off. I don't let it turn on. It's like it's about to, it's like, like I put the, the gas on, and I'm just hitting the gas in the car, but I don't actually touch it. It's, it's like it's barely touching. So then that's activated, but it's not really on yet. And then I immediately go to my stretch. All right, and that's where I get that, that frame that allows me to do the rest of the components internally. So to practice that, and I'm going to start by just reaching. And I'm not trying to push myself, okay? 
I'm just trying to feel what is the point where I start pushing, and then from there I'm gonna stretch open in all directions. So I'm stretching this way, I'm stretching that way, I'm stretching that way. Okay? And when I do that correctly and everything's open, I should feel compression in my abs. Just from doing this correctly, there should be an immediate transfer of energy, of pressure from here to my abs. Okay? So if I don't feel that, there's something wrong with either the beginning frame or the linkage in the shoulder. Okay? But again, you know, this is stuff that you should already have an intermediate level of understanding of the biomechanics before you try to start training these kind of things because it will throw you off if you don't understand how these things work because then you're training on top of dysfunction and only to create more dysfunction, okay? So you can't do that. You have to have a high level understanding of what your body's doing, okay? If you are at an intermediate level or instructor level, then these things maybe will help you. If you're a beginner who's never played push hands and doesn't even know how to do pump rock, this is going to mess you up, so don't do it, okay? I mean, this might not so much, you know, but all things combined, get your shit together first, okay? So, got my root, blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming everybody knows ground path and all the other stuff, okay, so I'm not going to talk about it. So my contact point, I feel the ground, it's my front foot, my back foot, the distribution of what I'm doing, okay? Now once I make this opening, I can't even do it separate, I automatically fill up my whole body at this point. So my, 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 as soon as I fill up this, I want this to fill up. <laughs> it's just a reflex. But um, the idea is that as soon as you feel compression in one place, you feel compression in all places. And it's very, very gentle, okay? Now from there, if you want to, you know, again, there's so many methods of what Pung is and how to describe it. So I'm just going to describe it in a way that I'm starting to feel it at this stage in my training, in my not training, because I've made it. So, think of like an equal opposite reaction. If I breathe in and I open my oblique slings, once I breathe in, this becomes like a, right, you know the, 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 the bellows that used to like pump the air for the fire? You've seen in cartoons a lot, you know, but people who have like a, a, a chimney fire, or a fireplace, they used to use this thing to push the air and make it, make it hot. Okay, that's how most martial arts want you to breathe. But the weird thing about Tai Chi is that when you open that bellow up and you keep using it, you're keeping the top open, so it becomes like this rubber inflatable tube tire thing, but on the inside. So when a low level, you feel compression here, you feel compression in your feet. Middle level, you should feel, as soon as the compression hits, you should feel like, it's like boop. <laughs> I can't just like explain it. It just feels like boop. Like, <laughs> it, it feels like as soon as I press this, I can feel it inside. I feel it immediately inside my guts. And then the, and I feel the floor, you know what I mean? So I still feel the floor connection, but it's like, it's hard for me not to open this up, okay? So that's the next thing I'm looking for. After <laughs> that, now, the only way I can explain this feeling, I don't know if it's right or wrong, I want to take my spine and pull it off the meat in the front of my body. I, I, I want to like pull my spine like a turtle this way and away. Like, it's almost like I want to pull this out and then rip this sideways. Okay, and, and I, it's a feeling I have in my body when I'm compressing. So it's like I, I want to do like a ninja turtle and just like, like one of those, ah, but at the same time, my inside is doing this. I can't explain it any other way. It's the weirdest feeling. And I feel like now from sitting so long, I can feel like those muscles are glued together. So what I tend to do as an exercise is I'll go up to a wall the cross stance, and I push my hip down, and then I breathe in, and I push and open this up. So, trying to create space in the QL and the psoas and all the stuff in the front of my spine to the back. You know, um, because a lot of our movements interior chain, we don't really do much from the posterior chain. We're getting glued up like this. We're sitting too long, and then you go into push hands, and you need the exact opposite. You know, well, it's actually sitting frame, really, but you're doing it in a standing body. You have a hunchback computer guy <laughs> then the Ninja Turtle frame is where you should really be. Alright, so, anyway, getting that is as I breathe in, pushing the wing wind and all that stuff out, 
but just mechanically, I'm just thinking that this, if I'm breathing in, and this compression, this pushing the, the little bubble thing down, opens this up on its own. So but it's not like tailbone going down, it's, it feels as if the muscles here are rolling, and this is going like this. And that pressure, I think, is, if anything, just really therapeutic. I don't know what kind of V that is in the video, but I'm not messing with it. But um, I think it's a really good exercise for most people who have like, you know, tight back and sore back from sitting too long because it opens up that whole hip and all sort of stuff. So, in the front, and then in the back, okay? The good thing is it's brush knee, and it's the compression and the brush knee, the same thing. I'm trying to get that, I feel pressure, I feel pressure, okay? Because if you don't do that, you'd be double heavy. It's like, um, for instance, when, when you're on, someone's on the ground, you have two options to hit them with a fist. You either go a drill straight through, or you get a hammer fist them, right? Which one's safer, and which one's more efficient? Does that, does that make sense? It's, it's the same idea. Um, to finish that point, if someone's actually coming in the heads by your knee, between your knee and your shin, you drop the knee down and you hit them with the reverse punch. Once they're below that, the hammer fist is definitely better. It's an extra nugget because we went got sidetracked. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So we'll do the other side. You can probably see my back. So, I get neutral and then. So, some people explain this as rounding the back, which is good, I don't know which video it was I explained this, but when the incoming force hits you and the spine wants to rebel it, when you make that C shape, it loops the energy and makes it want to roll. So if you catch somebody with that at the same time, it feels like they're, the way it feels to them, it feels like they're getting thrown in on themselves, okay? So, I'll do this right away. So here, push my tailbone, so my I'm trying, trying to put my, if I was like a dragon and had a tail, I'm putting my tail on the ground like a tripod behind me. So I'm just letting my, I'm literally like a, like a dragon and my tail's flapping around. It's going to be a tripod right behind me. So it's like right there. So if my tail's here, I just want to sit my tail down. And now my tail's on the ground, right? So from here, and from here to uh, and it's not a lot of force. I'm really just trying to feel what's happening inside my body. Okay? Do it the other side. What I'm really trying to do again is measure the compression inside my body. So the whole point of this is yes, it's an isometric extension. I'm practicing the concept of the reflex of pump. What I'm measuring internally is what does it feel like when I get this pressure system and there's a closed system, where is the energy in my body, what is the inside of my body doing, like how, how do my, uh, the muscles of my back, literally feeling them, expanding, where's the tension, like how nasty does it feel inside there, you know, feeling the joints opening and flexing and closing from a reflex from this, this pressure. It should be a closed system, okay? I think that's a lot. Uh, how much time have we got there, guys? Okay. Yeah, so that's a lot of exercises. Um, plank is the only exercise. If you're gonna do calisthenics, get that plank, planks down. Um, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, anybody has any questions, comments, accusations, put them in the comments below and all that other good stuff. Tell people, like, subscribe, share. If you want to donate, there's links going to be down there below. It's uh, Tau88 on Cash App and uh, PayPal.me slash Guide to Divinity. All right, guys. Well, see you soon.